Well, my name's Joseph Gray, and uh, welcome to Processing in Arduino in Tandem Video Mixer Edition. Um, today we're going to learn about how to make a video mixer. And uh, looking here, you can see a picture of pre-recorded video of the Proj box, and knobs are being turned, um, and then it's crossfading between a live and a captured uh, video stream. Uh, so the parts of the video mixer that we'll be building will be first, we'll build this live camera stream and display it. Uh, then we'll write some software, some code to make uh, it possible to record this display. And then we'll load that pre-recorded video in and then display it. And then we'll write uh, some code to mix those two video signals together, kind of like what you're seeing on screen there. Uh, after that, uh, we'll integrate the Proj box, and that'll allow us to have just some additional like physical controls that make it easier to uh, you know provide a, a more an expanded physical interface. Um, and then you know we'll get into a couple other tools like uh, being able to select between pre-recorded videos and uh, add a simple effect. What in this case it'll be um, being able to change the video speed. Um, in the download, there are, uh, there's an advanced video mixer that also has uh, blending modes and it has uh, the ability to scrub through these video recordings in time. Um, but without further ado, I suppose we should start. <laughs> okay, so the first thing we're going to do is set up the video mixer code. So I'm going to go hop over here into processing and I'm going to go file, new. And I'm just going to expand this out so we get a good view of everything. And I'm going to save this just quite simply into my you know, documents processing folder. Just call it video mixer. And you know you can call it whatever you want, but I'm just naming it what it is. So then the first thing you want to do inside this video mixer is the same thing that you pretty much want to do in every processing application uh, that deals with time. You set up a void setup, which runs once at the beginning of the program, and then void draw for everything that happens thereafter. And void draw is like a loop, and it'll just keep drawing. Uh, and if you're already familiar with processing, this is you know, standard stuff. Um, then what we want to do is, before we start getting into filling all this stuff in, is adding a bunch of tabs. So the first tab that we want to do to add on here is a video camera tab. And we're creating these tabs just to hold code according to the types of things that the code in them does. And uh, you know, just real quick uh, as a review, um, I just brought up the folder that it created, and I did that by pressing Apple K, or that would be Control K on the Mac, or on the PC. And you'll see that that video camera tab I created is now in there. It's just a, a text file with an extension PDE. Uh, we're going to create another one called Video File, which is where all of the code for the video file stuff will go when we're loading external files that we record off the camera, or off the display, actually. And then we're going to want to create a few more tabs. We're just going to make a bunch of them so they're just ready for us to start adding code into. And we can get an overview of the organization of the whole application. Uh, we'll want a recording tab for our recording functions. And we're also going to put a utils tab, which will hold utility functions uh, that will be kind of common to the application. Things that extend uh, processing, uh, you know, custom things like what we'll mo mostly use it for is a timestamp function, and uh, you could put other things in there if you were going to do save image or something like that. Uh, and finally, we're going to add an effects tab, and that's where we'll add in the stuff for like when we create our own mixes and stuff like that, like functions that do the actual mixing. And beyond that, the only other thing to do in the initial setup of this application is to add 
to go up to here to the sketch, import library, and import the video library. And you'll just see automatically it puts this uh, import processing.video.star. So it's just importing the entire uh, processing native video library. Um, oh yeah, and then a couple other things that we're gonna we're gonna do here is add an int, uh, which is an integer uh, that's gonna be the video width. So again, just things setting up the application. Um, I'm gonna make it 640 and for the width and the video height will equal 480. And that's just standard uh, video resolution. It should run on most uh, modern machines pretty quickly. Uh, if you're having trouble, you know, try setting these to 320 by 240. If your computer's slow, if your computer's really fast, try setting these at HD resolutions and see what happens. Okay, so inside of setup, we're gonna put a uh, size, which creates the size of the window that's going to display everything. And we're gonna pass into it those video width and video height. And that's gonna create the size of the actual application. And then we're gonna set up a frame rate. We're just gonna go with kind of standard NTSC uh, 30 frames a second. And then we're gonna turn off the cursor because we're not really interested in the cursor. Uh, we don't want it getting in the way of the images we're displaying. So we're gonna do that by typing in no cursor. Okay, so that's the whole section. Uh, what we just did is created a new sketch, save some tabs for grouping uh, the functions based on how they're used, and then we added a video library and set up some basics in our environment. Any questions? We don't have any questions so far. Okay. I think people are just following along. All right, cool. Yeah, I think that part's pretty straightforward if you're yep. already familiar with processing. Exactly.